Hello, my name is Dylan, but you can call me Buttercup. Welcome to Buttercup Yarn Art, a soft-spoken video journal where I play with yarn and share my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. If there's anything you'd like to hear me talk about, please leave a comment to let me know. The pattern I am working on is still the Sorrel Sweater from Woolen Pine, and as you can see, I have finished the first sleeve. I decided not to do any decreases for most of the sleeve until I got about half an inch from where I wanted to start the ribbing and then I did a rapid decrease down to half the stitch count and I did the same amount of ribbing on the cuff as I did for the neckline. I like a nice uh, thick cuff on my sweaters. So I am very excited to have that finished and I started the second sleeve. If I can get my yarn untangled from everything. Um, so I only really have one thing that I want to talk about today, and that is expensive yarns versus cheap yarns. Um, and I'm not touching on yarn snobbery or whether certain fibers are better, whatever that means, than others. I just want to talk about different price points, specifically. So this yarn that I'm using right now is $38 a skein. That is pretty expensive. Um, it's the most expensive yarn I've ever bought. It's linen and silk. It's very soft and lovely and it's hand dyed. And you know, there are all sorts of reasons for this yarn to be expensive. And I'm not saying that, you know, no yarn should be expensive. There are very good reasons for a particular yarn to be expensive. Um, but this is the first garment I'm making with any kind of expensive yarn, and I am enjoying working with this yarn. I like the colors, I like the feel of the yarn, but as I am working it. I'm thinking about, you know, the practicalities of it. You know, because this yarn is expensive, I really want to preserve the look of it as much as possible. I don't want this yarn, this sweater, to get damaged. So I'm not going to want to wear it when it's raining out. I'm going to want to be really, really careful if I'm eating while wearing it. You know, I'm going to be trying really hard to avoid having to wash this sweater for any reason. And 
kind of got me thinking. Would I have that same fear with a sweater made from a cheaper yarn? And the answer is no. I, I don't have that same kind of fear with a cheaper yarn. I, you know, I still avoid washing my hand knit things where I can, but sweaters made from cheaper yarns are I don't want to say sturdier but and less precious isn't right either um it's hard to explain you know they're cheaper in terms of money but not necessarily in terms of work. Um, it is, it's difficult to explain. Um, I'm trying to think of a way to explain it. That doesn't make me sound a little bit like a crazy person. Um, my work is just as valuable regardless of the price point of the yarn. But kind of like a bra. I want it because it is expensive in terms of work, in terms of fiber. I want to be as gentle of it, gentle with it as I can so that it will last as long as I can make it. Um, I have a couple of sweaters that were finished with acrylic yarn. And those I'm hesitant to wash too, even though the yarn was cheap. But that's because acrylic sheds microplastics. And I don't want to add those to the environment unnecessarily. So those I'm avoiding washing for environmental reasons. But this Yeah, this I want to preserve as best I can. So if it got dirty, I would want to wash it as quickly as possible so the stain wouldn't set. But realistically, I would really want to avoid that stain in the first place and not get it dirty so it doesn't need to be washed. Um, that does limit the utility of something like this, which is another concern, but I also have a bunch of expensive hemp yarn. I am um, 
I did some test swatches with that hemp yarn. And I did some washing tests with them because I had heard that hemp gets softer if you treat it poorly, essentially. And so I did three little swatches, same number of stitches, same number of rows, same cast on, same bind off. One I left unwashed. One I washed in the gentle cycle and tumble dried low. And one I washed in hot water, normal cycle, and tumble dried hot. Tumble dry high. And I don't even have to, I, I tied knots in the tails of the yarn to tell me which one was which. I don't need to check those to see which one is which. I can just touch them and tell because the, the one that I didn't wash is crispy. It's, it's almost crunchy to touch. It's very stiff and unpleasant. The one that went through the dental cycle and tumbled dry low is a little bit softer, but still pretty crunchy. And the one that went through the normal wash and tumble dry high is very soft, almost as soft as I would like. I would probably want to chuck it through the wash again to get it perfect. And I got that yarn to make a particular sweater that, looking at it now, has a kind of ridiculous yarn quantity requirement and which I kept putting off and putting off and putting off and I decided to just not do it and I decided to use the yarn for something else so I picked out pattern and that pattern took less than half the yarn that I had that I have. So I picked another sweater as well to do. And I think I'm making a good choice here. I've got, I'm getting two sweaters out of the yarn that I was planning to use for one. I'm okay with that. Um, You know, those sweaters, once I knit them up, I don't think I'm going to be afraid to wash them like I am with this, even though they're going to be similarly expensive in terms of how much the yarn was. But that's because it's hemp and basically the meaner you are to hemp, as I understand it. Do some research, don't take my word for it. But as I heard it, the meaner you are to hemp, the better it feels. And my own personal tests have borne that out. So, once I get to those sweaters, which are actually coming up in my queue, quickly once I get this finished. I've only got a couple of other things to finish 
before I get to those. And I'm very excited for them. There are a couple of patterns that I've been coming back to and coming back to for a while. And I'm really looking forward to making them. So, you know, it's not, it's not hard and fast that I'm uncomfortable caring for expensive yarn versus cheap yarn. It's more, you know, expensive yarn, especially hand-dyed, tends to need kinder care, gentler care, and, you know, I, I worry more about keeping the finished products looking nice when they're made from yarns that need to be treated more gently. And from what I've noticed, expensive yarns, you know, as soft and lovely as they are, do generally need to be treated with a gentler hand. I think I said that already. Oh well. I think that's everything that I had to say. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you have a wonderful day.